Hi, I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We're in Anaheim, California at the 91 Car Show. The reason it's called 91 is there's Highway 91 going by here. You are going to do what you do every week. You're going to see some really great cars. Some There's all kinds of different vehicles here. It's a very eclectic show, and you're going to meet some great people and listen to some great music. So you know the drill. Just kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. People often ask me how I choose which car is going to be on the Vintage Vehicle Show. Well, it usually has to do with what side of the bed I got up on and what car speaks to me when I'm walking around. This one yelled at me. Uh, John Maxwell, your 1931 Ford is absolutely beautiful. Tell us about it. Well, thank you. I gladly appreciate it. It is a 1931 Ford Model A Roadster, uh, custom made from the frame up. I didn't build the car, but I appreciate it so much that I bought the car. Found it on eBay uh, last year, uh, and I've been enjoying it ever since. Probably, well, there's there's two things that leap out uh, besides the fact that it's the, the the overall design, but the the front end. What have you got going on here? It is it's very different than than a 31 Ford. Yes, the uh, the hood and the side of the hood panels were from a 37 Ford truck, uh, and the grill was from a 37 Ford truck. Also, has been cut down to fit. And the windshield frame, that is, I, I can't identify that. What's that? 
Well, I can't identify it either. Uh, the guy that built it uh, did a good job of building it. Looks like it came from the back window of a car like a 49 Mercury or 49 Ford uh, that had a split back window. Uh, but he custom built it, chopped it, and uh, it made it look really nice. It looks great. The, the rat rod movement, of course, is, is enormous and successful, and I love them. Do you consider this a rat rod, or is this a traditional hot rod? What, what do you think you have? Well, again, at my age, I consider this to be a traditional hot rod rather than a rat rod, only because of the age difference between what rat rods are doing today. Uh, I think the rat rod movement has been great for getting young people into the hobby uh, because they can afford it and they can build it and show their talents off. Uh, but this is a traditional hot rod for me. I love the rat rod movement because it tells people they don't have to polish their car before every show. Well, that's been great. I used to have a car that I would spend an hour at every, every car show shining it up. This I don't even bother with it. So it uh, looks good in the flat paint and it's going to stay just the way it is. You didn't look like you were working very hard when I came over and asked if you'd be on the show. No, it's uh, just come and relax and enjoy the day now. All right. Well, when you're driving in here, what's the power plan on this? What's getting the car here? It's a 283 Chevy small block with uh, three two barrels on it. Nothing radical. It's got uh, the side exhaust, which is pretty neat on it. Uh, it looks like a sewer pipe almost. It's, it's a real cast heavy pipe on it. And I put baffles in it to quiet down a little bit because uh, it was quite noisy when I first got it. Outside of the car community, when you uh, run an errand to the Safeway store or, or whatever, uh, does this draw a crowd or is it invisible to the, the non-car people or what kind of reaction do you get from the public? Well, it really appeals to anybody that's in the cars at all. The regular people my age uh, that aren't in the cars could care less about it. Uh, but I get thumbs up all the time driving it. All right. Well, uh, thumbs up from me. John, thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle Show. This is a very cool car. Well, thank you very much. All right. Oscar Elos, about 40 years ago, I had a 54 Chevrolet, but it didn't look anything like this. This is an absolutely beautiful car. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I've done a lot to this car. It's, it's a body off restoration, and when we put it back together, uh, every bolt, nut, it's uh, washers or cat plated gold. 90% of it, and the rest of it was stainless steel, so, uh, and the frames was completely uh, uh, lacquer black at that time on this vehicle here, you know. 
Of course, the most striking thing on the thing is, I think, is the t I mean, the overall design, of mm -hmm. course, but the top. I mean, that just beckons from miles away. Oh, yeah. That old school metal flake. And my brother did that. It's like a rainbow metal flake. We did it old school with the spray gun, you know. You know maybe about 30 coats of uh, clear on top of it. You know, I'm kind of like an old school guy, you know. I like that, you know, that look, you know, that depthness of the flake. Well, the, the, this type of lowrider old school has not gone away. If this car was rolling around 30 years ago and looked like this, it was perfect. 30 years later, it still looks really good. Even better, huh? Yeah. Than 30 years, yeah. Was well, this upgraded? Like I said, we did something different. The the clip in the front is off a Corvette, and the front got disc brakes, and it's been channeled into the frame so it could lay lower. That's why you see the bumper close to the ground. So they did a lot of modifications to this 54. It's not just putting hydraulics in it, you know. The, the rear end is in two pieces. The rear end is uh, 1139. It's got the original rear end, power glide. And it, it's only like maybe about three feet long, and then it goes into a drive shaft to a big bushing. And they done that, so we lower the car down, it clears the floorboard. You don't have to channel it. It's, it's, you gotta see it to believe what's on the bottom of this car. It's just amazing, you know. What's the engine? It's got a 350, original 350, just stock. So a lot of these uh, keep the six in them, but you decided you want a little more scoot with this. Yes, I decided to go up, uh, kind of upgrade it, you know, with the V8, with the 350 and the 350 transmission turbo, and keep it a little more um, speed, kind of, you know, uh, not only that, kind of the look, you know, give it the V8 look. So uh, I decided to go a little different than everybody else, you know. Tell me about the Duke's Car Club. Well, we still like we started in 1959 as a social club, and decided to start uh, a car club in 1962. And we, I'm the co-founder of, of the car club. Of course, with my brothers, I can mention their name if you don't mind. Go ahead. Julio Relas, he just he's passed away four years ago. Myself, Ernie Relas, Fernando Relas, he just passed away a year ago, and Rene Relas. This was brother. a family. Family. This is a family oriented club here and and that's where it's always been and we got 35 chapters 37 chapters all over the world what's the total membership of all the chapters you know i couldn't even tell you that because it's, it's different some got 20 some got 30 members some got 15 you know it all depends yeah. well you only hear good things about the dukes i, I sure hope so yeah we've been uh doing this for so many years over 50 years so and i guess we they put us on the map right. you know and i'm real proud of it well, Oscar, I'm going to be good to you. Well, the 54 that I bought, I paid 50 bucks for it. It was a very nice car. I'm willing to pay four times that for your car. <laughs> for my car? Well, yeah. well, we'll talk. We'll talk yeah. later. <laughs> okay. Oscar, thank you very much for thank being on the Vintage so Vehicle much. Show. Thank it was you a so much for having me here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. A lot of the car shows that we go to have a celebrity that everybody's excited to see there. Well, Von Hot Rod is here, and uh, it's very cool to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And tell us, uh, you've been doing this a long time, and I've known of you a long time, and the viewers have, but you really, in the last few years, have come on the scene strong, it seems. Yeah, it's been really crazy, because pinstriping or artistry has just really hit main stream lately it's um, you can find it on your local television commercials now you can find it on Melrose on, on Hollywood Boulevard you can find pinstriping just everywhere now where before it was just strictly like on your hot rods or your street rods and stuff like that now you find it like on a pair of high heel shoes you find it on a laptop computer it's amazing where pinstriping has gone in the last couple of years that's such a, an old school and, and, and high tech thing to do it on a computer. Yeah, exactly. It's funny to watch the, um, as I say, the original street rod guys kind of look like, hey, that belongs on a hot rod on the hood of a car, not on a laptop computer. Uh -huh. It all, it seems to be pretty traditional, what, uh, you know, the, the people come out that are pinstriping and they'll do stuff a little bit different, but basically we're sort of the same kind of uh, feel comes from it. Any big changes that you've seen? Other than uh, coming from a hood of a car to a pair of shoes, no, it's, what's nice about it is that they love the history, they love the freehand stuff. It's not computer generated, it's not something you can technically buy in a store off a shelf, it's all hand done. People get a kick out of watching me do it, watching me create a design from nothing. You know, drawing a center line and then creating a left and right mirror image. You know, they just like that. Something they can take home from a car show, an event that's tangible. Hey, look, I got this at such and such event. And it's original, it's hand done, and they dig stuff like that. 
And where it used to always be on a car or something, now people are, are hanging it on their walls. Oh, absolutely. It's gotten really mainstream. I did a, a piece for a guy in his office, and um, it was 10 feet by 8 feet wide. And it was like almost I needed a rolling pin to get my lines so big, but it was a really nice piece, really big, but it was a lot of fun. What's the most unique thing you've ever pinstriped? Oh, uh, you're going to love this one. I was in this Vegas. This is a family show. Yeah, no, no, no. I was in Vegas, and a guy asked me would I stripe a gun. I said, sure, as long as it's not loaded. So he reaches in his belt and takes out a gun. So I thought that was the weirdest thing until I was in Scottsdale, Arizona, and a guy asked me, he goes, hey, would you stripe my glass eye? And I said, sure, why not, as long as it's out of your head. He goes, all right. So he popped it out and handed me two, and I striped his glass eye for him. So that is the odd, oddest thing I've ever done. I have never heard of that, never thought of that. Yeah, neither did I. It was kind of weird because when he handed it to me, it was kind of warm, so I kind of like just dropped uh, it on the table. Yeah. Well, Von Hot Rod, thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle Show. It's a real honor to have you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And don't forget, watch it. Don't miss it. Back to you. I'm going to go get some popcorn. <laughs> Diane Chadley, you have an absolutely stunning combination here. You have a 53 Ford cab over and a 56 Ford panel truck. What a unique combination. Thank you. It's really great. We have a lot of fun with this. This Did this come to you in a dream and you followed through? I mean, this is a pretty unusual package. Well, actually, my husband has always wanted a COE. We've always had 56 Ford trucks and panels. And he ran across this in the Good Guy Gazette. And um, father and son team in Indiana built this. And my father-in-law owned a Gilmore gas station in Redondo Beach in the 40s. So this is the theme we went with. So these are the Gilmore colors. And the Gilmore is still third in Fairfax in Los Angeles Farmer's Market. So we kind of travel around and promote them. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, it's stunning. It's breathtaking. And mm -hmm. the running gear on the truck, what do you, what power is it? It's a 2002 um, turbo diesel, so it's a par stroke. So the running gear is all 2002 E350 Super Duty van, and they took the cab off of the COE and extended it 72 inches so that the hauler would fit on it. How's it to drive? This is a, a big combination here. It drives really good. Of course, it has airbags, so we can drop it to the ground and raise it up when we're traveling. 
And of course, with the turbo diesel, it moves. It doesn't understand what a hill is. And the suspension's all updated, so it's comfortable all updated, to. The 2002. It has, um, you know, the cameras. Um, it's just got everything updated on it. So the only thing old, actually, is the body. Well, the panel truck on the back there, the 56 Ford, tell us about that. Okay, our son found this for us in Phelan, California, where he lives. Started out being blue with a little surfer on it. So it was done in Lake Elsinore, the paint um, to match the hauler. What's the running gear on that? It is a 351 Windsor with a C4 transmission. So it scoots along too? It scoots too, but it stays on top. They're a package deal. Um, you can't just park this anywhere. This is when you go to shows, they have to lay something out special for you. You have to call in advance and say this is what we have. We're 30 feet long. Send a picture and of course, most shows do want it. Have you received some peculiar statements or, or do people come up and say, oh my, my grandpa owned a Gilmore station or, or Gilmore never had a rig like this or what kind of re remarks have you heard? Correct. All of those and um, they will bring up memories of the Gilmore Stadium because they did have a race stadium up at 3rd and Fairfax where they raced midget cars. They also had a baseball field up there. So we do run into a lot of people that brings back memories. You must have a big garage. We do. Yeah. Yes. All right, well, Diane, I'm going to let you return to that big garage. Thank okay. you very much for being on the Vintage Thank Vehicle you. Show. This is beautiful. Thank you. Carl Mauger, what am I sitting on here? You're sitting on a retro motorbike. It's a felt design bicycle with my engines on it. They're uh, tremendous little bikes. They get 150 miles to a gallon. Your operating cost is 0 0.045 cents a mile. And there's California legal, uh, tremendous little bikes. This is a theme bike. This is the Surf City bike. Uh, one of the specialty bikes made by felt. About 49 cc's or so? 
Correct, yes. They top out at 30 miles per hour as required by the state of California. Well, I'm going to see if I can break a few laws with this. Uh, and I want to thank you. Before I break those laws, I want to thank you all for watching the show today. We've had a great time here at the 91 Car Show. Carl, if you would uh, hold this, and I'm going to go uh, see if I can scare some of the, the local animals or whatever here. Good luck. Thank right. you, sir.